All righty, guys. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Where's the <it>, guys? <laughs> hey, all you guys over there. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Welcome to the bird show. Wonderful bird. Yeah, put a bird on it. For sure. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We've clearly lost our minds. The, the shelter in place has um, worked its magic. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm doing great. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, that, well that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I believe you, but it's awesome. Um, you know, um, it has has changed some things. Like I, I was I was listening to some news, I was, I was reading some articles, and um, the news is definitely different. Like the stuff that you hear people talk, talking about now than it was before. Like I read an article about a woman, um, and it was like it was like, it was like a women's mag magazine or something, and she was, you know, um, asking how many days is it okay to wear yo yoga pants in a row? <laughs> <laughs> and she was really trying trying to break it down and figure it out. But I don't know things, things like that. Also, um, there's lots of DIY articles on how to make hand sanitizer, how to make how to make face masks, how to make um, yeah. I saw all really, these things. I saw a really good um, one last night because to, today was the first day that I was going to go out and do all the grocery shopping for the week. I mm -hmm. had some pa painting to deliver, all kinds of stuff. So I was like, it, it, you know, I'm like apocalypse outfit, you know. <laughs> and, but I saw it, and I this sparks John and I talking about wearing masks and stuff when we go out. And, um, and we don't have any, and, you know, they say you can use a scarf and all that stuff. And, but anyway, I stumbled on this, um, somebody on my Facebook feed did a really good one where they had like a scarf, but it was a full loop scarf and they mm -hmm. doubled it up and then they got a, um, like can koozie, cut oh. it, uh, down one of the seams. And then you can like the way that the bottom of a koozie is, has this like, you know, that little bottom, you mm -hmm. just put it on your face and it like fits perfectly and then put the scarf over it. And it was like, <laughs> wow. I was like, that's genius. I have so many koozies. That's pretty cool. <laughs> wow. So, that's yeah. pretty neat. Well, wow. Yeah. You know, so creativity is flourishing. Yes. Out there. That is for sure. I mean, you can tell in the memes alone. You know, and that goes right into what one of the things that we wanted to, to, to talk. Oh, yes, that's true. The memes. But I wanted to say really quickly. Um, um, yeah, let's go to the memes. But before we do that, um, <laughs> I, um, we also um, the creativity, though, is just incredible what, what's out there right now. And one, and one of the things we wanted to talk to today was about about boosting your own art right now. So many people are having to stay in their homes. And and, and I know that that's a challenge. It could be a bad thing. But. It does open up some opportunities, though, to be able to do different things with our time. So a lot of people are out of work right now, which is horrible and is stressful. But um, for those creatives of us, though, that are always looking to find extra time to be able to do our work, um, this might be a really great time to be able to put together a bunch of work, you know, a body of work. And, and we're, we're, we're going to talk, talk about that. So how there might be some things to take this time and turn it into a positive. And also what a perfect gallery experience would be like. And I know there's some places we visited. And I'm really curious what other people have gone to, what galleries. I mean, I love one of my favorite things is to go with, with, with Jackie to a museum or a gallery. And she describes the artwork to me in the different places <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool oh oh and um let's see but before we hit up the memes um we have this here all right so dun, that's dun, that's what dun. you're working on today huh it is that's what i'm working on I, let's see i think i was working on this on um last thursday yeah. as well in our live show then you just had the hair you didn't have anything on the guitar Oh yeah, yeah. So I've added to the guitar. Um, I've been working on um, commission pieces and things, and working on this a little bit. So it's a lot of fun to be able to go from one to the other. And um, so I'm going to be working on this tonight, and um, so, and that that'll be interesting. Um, I'm going to be adding a lot more, but I but I have, but I could talk about that in a minute and all that. But to the memes, to the memes. <laughs> so so these are some. Uh, it just this sort of turned into something we do now on the show is we, we pick like the favorite <laughs> memes that have come across the um, Facebooks or any social media. And I thought this one was fitting. It's the dude from um, the walking dead and he's, they've like photoshopped a, ma a mask on him and he's looking down at his hand and it, and it says milk, eggs, bread, toilet paper, sanitizer. So he's, he's basically going out uh -huh. to That's fun. grocery shop, which is how I felt today. I bet, it yeah, very yeah, weird. yeah. Very you, weird. you came home and you and the question is, like, should we pl spray Clorox on? on yeah, we were like, or? you know, I I didn't want any, you know, you to touch anything. It was yeah, oh, it's all weird. Yeah, I I, <clears throat> I didn't have to put up any groceries. 
So, you know, <laughs> yeah. there are good benefits. <laughs> there are benefits. This one I felt really hit home. Oh, what is this? It's a, it's a seal. It, he's laying down, and it says, when this is over, what meeting do I attend first, Weight Watchers or AA? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's We funny. know what meeting that is. <laughs> <laughs> Arts Anonymous? <laughs> no, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, okay, and this one is, I feel like a teenager again, gas is $1.50, and I am grounded. <laughs> Which kind of hurt me a little bit, because I was like, oh, gas is so cheap right now, and you just can't, you can't go, go anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> it sucks, and we drive everywhere. Yeah, that's that's, that's so true. And yeah. it's Yeah, that's that's kind of funny, because, um, so, you know, maybe what we should be, should be doing is buying up Tons of gas and storing like it in Like an Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode where they just had bar <laughs> barrels. <laughs> they had barrels. That's right. We're, we're going to limo and we'll start, we'll start selling it door to door. Hey, you want some gas? Hey. <laughs> I, think, I, think there, I think we might get in trouble for that. It sounds dangerous. Well, they, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it didn't end up well for them it either. Did not. That That's a funny show. I forgot about that. It's, it's um, yeah, it's. It's definitely not child appropriate sort of humor, but um, gosh, it's so good, yeah, so good. It's good stuff, and plenty of seasons to watch. That's for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true too. And they're still making them, aren't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, um, I want to, I want to, I want to get into t talking about like um, how art, how we can do things, you know, and right now, like be creative with all this. Yes. Extra time we have on our hands. So much time. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it, does it? I mean. Well, I was going a little stir crazy yesterday. Like, I don't know what it is on the weekends, but I, you know what? It might be because I'm I'm not allowed to go outside. I mean, we don't go outside normally, but now that I can go outside, I feel like I'm cooped up, and so <laughs> the weekends it, it hits me a little bit harder. And so yesterday I was going a little stir crazy, and Jack and I were making little clay figures. I worked on my Death Star, my Lego Death Star, which I held on to for three years. And then I brailled a board game. Oh, you guys were getting busy. Oh, yeah. And that was so <laughs> sweet of you to do that. So, um, What's the name of it? Catan? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, getting a little stir crazy. Yeah. But time. Lots of time. You know what I wonder might be fun? Maybe to do it on, on the on Patreon or maybe on the, the damn group, like mm -hmm. the Jurassic Art Measures, <clears throat> like our, our art group that we have for makers, um, is to maybe play a board game or a card game or something. Um on zoom or something oh yeah yeah yeah. Where we're all together and, and we're like you know but i don't know it might it might be hard though like i mean like we could all play poker but everybody would have to like deal themselves cards yeah that would be weird it you would have to be, be you have to be honest and uh, i don't know we we have we'd a be honest. we <laughs> I well, we, have, again. We, wow, that's weird. we have quite a few people <laughs> joining us thanks for joining us oh thanks guys um and uh joseph joined us and says he just wanted to say hi it's too late where he is so he's going to catch it when it's on the YouTube. So. Oh, get get some rest and thanks. Yeah. Thanks for saying hi. So I, I should say that to your point about the whole Zoom and game thing, um, Brian, one of our good friends, plays board games neurotically. In fact, he just chimed in and said tabletop simulator, which is what I was about to say. Hey, oh. he he plays regularly board every Thursday, probably even I think Sunday, almost every day. It seems like he's got a board game night with friends, and ever since then he's been um, playing on his laptop tabletop simulator. Yeah, but what makes Brian different than us is that he has friends. <laughs> <laughs> He's likable. He's our way in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's our way in. <laughs> so, um, so there are ways to play your board games with friends and stuff. But um, that's cool. Yeah. What's yeah? I didn't, I didn't see. And that's why it's good to stream live because then you you learn things. You learn things. So, you know, it, it, that uh, I'm curious what everybody out there is doing to keep themselves busy or if there's board games they're playing online. I know a lot of people were, like, neurotically playing Animal Crossing. Oh. Um, which I'm amazed, Jack, that wasn't, like, our kid Jack is constantly, you know, what's the next game? What's, you know, what can I, he just, you know, glued to the screen. And it was the one game he was like, meh, I don't care. Even though, like, his cousin plays it, it's just... Yeah, so... Well, that's funny. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I've never heard of it, but I just read an article where it said that um, s Switch devices and stuff, they're really hard to find Yeah. because because of, of that game. And I just read that, and I thought, I never heard of that. Well, I don't play video games, um, obviously, but, um, but um, yeah, that's kind of weird. Uh, well, I should say really fast, um, 
And Neelam says hi. Sean Keen says hi. And well, hi um, <laughs> Brian said Animal Crossing is for cool people. Oh. I'm pretty yeah. sure Jack would be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, J Jack, Jack will have to be on the next live stream so he can stick up for himself. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, Brian. I know. He wants to join the live streams, but I am afraid it would turn into a giant conversation about Team Fortress 2 for an hour. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So. One of these one of these days, guys, we might be doing a Team Fortress Two live stream. Yeah, we'll have to warn you. So, yeah, <laughs> if you're really into it, you can tune in. <laughs> but it, it would be interesting though, like to talk about like Jack. Jack is also really into to, to retro gaming and the yeah. art the art of games and, and the way like that the old eight eight bit and sixteen bit and things have changed. And he has been for years. I yeah. mean, he's only twelve, but he's like he has this deep appreciation for retro gaming and the, and the artwork for games and stuff which um which is pretty cool and um so i mean it, it might be interesting to do a um a show where, where where we talk about how the artwork for games and the ideas have changed so we did a star trek yeah you know let's, get, let's, get, let's dive even more into that geekier realm yes <laughs> talk but, about but of course but you know that's partly my doing because we go, to, we, <laughs> we go to retro palooza which is a big retro gaming con convention and that's always in October and stuff and, and I mean we haven't missed a year so with it's yeah it's what we do that's true um, Doug Lewis joined us says hi Jackie long time I used to work with him at UNT ages ago oh Hello. cool thanks for joining I have so much dog hair it's in the paint of this it's ridiculous so yeah that painting has been it was like leaning against the wall in here, but sitting on, on the ground and the dogs just, well, yeah. And I, I had it, it was in the, I was drawing another painting. Um, it was a commission that was going out yesterday and, um, and I was drawing the varnish on that one. And then this was kind of behind it on the ground. I, I oh, forgot no. it was back there. So it was just sort of the dog. I mean, it's fine. All of it comes right out. When, once the paint dries, it all comes out. Well, you, it's how like in a hundred years, they're going to authenticate your paintings. It's yeah. Have dog hair in it. Yeah. They'll be like, mm. clearly. That doesn't have dog hair. It's unofficial. <laughs> you know, um, one of the things though, like that, that I, I, that I found that's kind of interesting about all this time. Yeah. A lot of creatives, a lot of people who um, work another job, and maybe they want to be an artist, or um, or just you know they do art. I mean, like a lot of people are starting to get a little stir crazy right now. Yeah. And art is a great way to deal with with, with negative emotions. And um, so, I mean, like, whether or not anybody ever wants to try to to be a professional artist or be a part-time artist or whatever, you know, where you sell at certain shows or this or that, this is a really great time to start creating. And, um, you know, because it just helps you deal with with emotions and things that are out there. You know, that, you know, it, whenever you're, if you're painting or if you're sculpting, but if you're, like, if you're painting, your concentration is on that brush for that one moment. Yeah. And you're not worried about anything in the past. You're not thinking about the future. You're right there in the moment. And it, it's a, it's a little mini mini va vacation from everything that you're having to deal with, and uh, which is such a great thing. And if you're a person who is wanting to put their art out there, you know this is a really good time to be able to start bu building a, a catalog of work. I mean, one of, one of the things I think that we both run into when, when we're talking to artists that are wanting to take their art to the next level and perhaps start showing it or you know making. Um, not really slides anymore. I don't know what you call it, but like you, you start, you start trying to get into galleries or shows. Yeah. You need a body of work to be able to show. Um, but it's hard though, if you're working 40 hours a week or more, Yeah. you know, and maybe you're also going to school or maybe, maybe a family, you have other responsibilities you're having to do, you know, it, it's really, really hard. I mean, I, I have met some phenomenally talented people and, um, and well, it may our, take them years. Yeah. I mean, my brother is a big example of that. He's yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking about Andy when I said that. He's insanely I, I, I didn't talented, want to name him. and but <laughs> his you know profession keeps him yeah working like eighty hours a week. I don't even know. It seems crazy, but yeah, he's one of those people that are like, if they if they went to studio art, they would kill it. Oh yeah, yeah, and and it's one of those things too where and you have to do it in the right way. So I mean, it's it's good to kind of wait, you know, until you get it, but um. But also, like, if you want to have prints made, there's a big learning curve for that. So, I mean, and that's something that Jackie and I are actually actually want to help some artists do and stuff. And we, on our Facebooks, our Facebooks, we have um, um, a group called Drastic Art, Art Measures. Um, so it's our, our damn friends. 
<laughs> over there. <laughs> and, um, and we've used the group a little bit in the past, but we're really going to start amping it up now. Yeah. But, um, because, um, and we're going to start using it as a place for creatives and people that, that want to take their art to the next level or they just want to create more or they want to try new things yeah. out. So yeah. you don't have to be like a professional artist or someone that wants to sell their artwork. But if you do though, we want to talk about, you know, about ways to, um, to make, make prints and to be able to do them right, you know, so that you have a really high quality print. So if you want to make a G clay later, if you want to, you know, if you want to get a really nice representation of your work where the colors are true and everything, yeah, how to do that. And that's going to be kind of the, a good place for people to go and ask questions and stuff. And then, um, then we can make videos from it from there. And, um, and I'm also making lots of videos for our, our, our Patreon site because, um, People ask questions, and I, you know, so we post more videos there than we do anywhere. I think. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, and we're ramping it up. Um, so, and that's going to be fun. A lot of that's just sort of behind the scenes, or like if I'm, we're putting a show together, if I'm working on a commission, it's just you know, what are the nuts and bolts of these different things, and how does yeah. it work? How does it look? And so that's fun, and it's fun. I don't know. So I should say really fast, because um, we have some comments before oh. they get on top of me. Um, uh, Craig Gill says, hi, John. Wish you could come back to Winsboro, Louisiana again. Oh, man. I would love to go back there. It was, oh, yeah. It was awesome when we were there. Everybody was so nice. And oh, my goodness. It was really cool. Uh, they just had a cool show, too, at the museum. Yeah. Well, they have regular, at the old post office, mm -hmm. they have regular cool show. I mean, yeah. They do. Yeah. I mean, they, they always do, but, but um, 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 um. They, they just had one, though, and I can't, I can't remember what it is right now. But um. Well, I, they did a wedding dress one, an old wedding dress. That one, the photos looked amazing. It was cool. Yeah, that's um, cool. That wasn't that, that that the, the one you were talking about. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> and they, have, they also have, like, a well, they probably don't right now, but they have a massive catfish fry festival. Oh, my that goodness. That is supposedly, like, people travel from all over the place to, like, go to this. I'm, I'm jealous. I've always wanted to go to this. And I have to tell people too, like if you're, if you're, if you find yourself traveling through Louisiana and you want to go to like a place that has like a small town feel, but the, and the people are just incredibly friendly. I mean, we did it. We did a show there at the old post office museum and it's not like a museum of post office stuff. It's an old post office that um, building that they've turned into a museum art, into an art museum. Yeah. Killer France. Uh, oh France, yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and it's just, it's just incredible. It's so much fun. But we did a show there, and um, oh my goodness, I think like the the police the, the the police force like did a, um, a fish fry for us, and the fire department yeah. came out Plus and that, helped with them. I mean, just the whole town it was, seems like it just pulls together, and yeah, to do that for art, that's just bro. I don't know. It's a, yeah, yeah, great so, people. Um, and then Neelam uh, said, my daughter had an opportunity to come and paint with John. She is deaf blind and, and is a student at Plano ISD. She still cherishes the memory. Oh my goodness! Well. Thanks so much for doing that. That's, that's yeah, brilliant. that's awesome. It's a, that's like the best. Like we'll do some um, workshops with the elementary kids in Denton, and at, and whenever the festival rolls around, the arts and jazz one, it, the best time is when the kids come by and they're like, "Mom, Dad, this is John," and it's like awesome. That's so <laughs> I did, much fun. Um, I, I forget what state this was, but I, I did a thing where there was some city. I don't I don't think it was Indianapolis. You you'll probably remember. But I was there for like 10 days and every day I was visiting like one, two or three schools. Yeah. And, and I ended up, and the idea was to paint with every kid in the town. And I can't remember what the town was right now, but it was, um, but I did, I painted with every child. It wasn't a small town, but, um, but the really cool thing about it was, was that with my guide dog, you know, cause kids could care less if I'm there, but it's all yeah. about the dog. <laughs> and of course the dog would be famous. So, so I, I would walk down this, the city streets, like on main street. And you would hear kids going, oh, my goodness, there's that dog. And, the, and their parents would be like, what, what's going on? <laughs> like, what, what's the deal? What's the deal? What's the dog so special? And like, oh, it's, yeah, they'd it's, remember Eagle's name. Yeah. Well, yeah, Echo the, at the time, I think. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's Echo, it's Echo. But they don't remember your name. <laughs> Do we bring her a bottle of water? Can we have her photo taken with her? So it, was like, it, was, it was like traveling around with a, with a movie star. But. Yeah. That's, well, yeah. It's your, it's your, your hinge pin, your way in. Heck yeah, yeah, and it's, it's so great because kids just—I don't know—you know they they they're, they're more relaxed. Yeah. With the pup. So uh, Azur joined us. Says hi, all hugs. Oh, hey, hugs Lin back. Uh, Linda Emerton said um, she got her prints today. Yay! Oh yay! Owen says hi. Well, hey Owen. Um, you've been tick tick talking. Oh okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? 
Um, uh, Derek uh, Krauthamel, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he said, hey, John, I'm wondering if you could paint me a picture if I describe it to you. Um, I love your paintings uh, and you're an inspiration. Well, thank you. I, I don't know. Um... You, you, have, you have multiple methods of doing commissions that somebody wants a specific I do, thing. I do. Yeah. And, um, it's either like... I might, I might be able to do it from a, um, a description. Um, I have software and um, device, uh, you know, stuff in my studio too, so that I can work from certain photos yeah. too. Like it'll turn it into sound. It'll turn it into a tactile sort of thing. Um, um, so it just depends because there, there, there's some things that I, I, I you know, I, I can't do like the photo isn't right or I don't understand or, or yeah, but um but more often though, especially with the way the technology has gotten so much better. Yeah. Like, like it, it, there, it, more often than not, I, I can usually get an idea of something. Yeah. And you're pretty good about when somebody describes something to you, getting it right. Oh, thank yeah. you. But I'm also <laughs> really good. If I don't think that I'm the best artist for it, or if I can't do it, I will definitely let you know, you know, cause yeah, that's true. You, some people have emailed and been like, can you get a shark jumping out of a ocean, grabbing onto a, Octopus, uh, octopus the, yeah, and it's uh, like no, <laughs> like, no I, but yeah. there's other artists who would be amazing at that yeah. and, um, but you know and, and that's one of the things too like with the commission I never charge for a commission I, I don't ever get any money up front um, because like you know I want to be psyched about the idea and the person psyched and, and so if we agree on doing a commission I'll do the painting and then you know if you like it at the end of that then you have like first refusal you know if you're and, the, and that way, at least I know that one of us is going to be happy with it. And, <laughs> there you but, go. You know, and it also makes it, you know, it, it I, I don't know. I mean, like, a lot of times when I do a commission, I may be 80 or 90% sure I can do it. And that way, it puts all the onus on me, you know. It's yeah. Not, you know, it's. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So. Well, um, Rose Tutu Morris says, hey, guys. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, Tutu? That's blast from the past. Derby. Tutu. Old school in it. <laughs> Derby days, huh? Yep, yep, yep. Man. Um. Anyway, so what are you working on? Like, what? What's the next step with this painting? What's going on? Talk to me. Well, this lady is having a hair day. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, I, I've stopped working on your hair for a little bit. One of the mediums that I'm using to be able to draw with, um is very gel based and it's awesome because it feels very different it has a side effect though too and this is always the way with it where it dries very slowly like you know acrylics dry fast this stuff dries more like an uh, oil paint which is why i was having the trouble with the dog hair well most, most um, of the time it would dry in 10 minutes 20 minutes um you know this two or three days later it's still wet <laughs> in places and um so um so i'm leaving that just to let it dry because I want to let I want to let this stay as a um, more of a background that I'm going to paint on. So right now I'm working on her face and I, I'm putting in some very pale blues, some very pale pinks, a little bit of yellow, and, um, and I, I'm just blocking in the in the um, face. And if you've watched this on here very often, then you probably heard me talk about blocking quite a bit. And so and and it's just a way of building up form using color. So I'm putting in some darker. This started out as a, as a kind of a purple, and now I'm moving it over to a lighter blue or a blue, putting some pinks in. The chin is all warbly and the nose is warbly, like the lines aren't straight, but that's okay. We're just blocking in the that's color. Okay. And, and later, um, I'll when, I'll actually go in and I'll start to, to sharpen things up a little bit. Ooh, cool. So, But it, it makes it, though, it makes it nice. Like A lot of times people will ask, well, how do you draw? And um, I think, well, in, in my mind, because I'm so used to drawing the way I draw, I think, well, I, um, I just draw, I, I just, I just do. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I put the lines, I, I, it's like I put the lotion on the skin. I put the lines on the canvas. <laughs> but, um, but I think the thing, though, like, people are like, well, how do you know where you're putting it? And if, if you're used to sight, use your eyes to see where you are and what you're doing. If you're visually impaired, use your sense of touch to do that with everything, whether you're picking up your cup or you're walking across a room and you're, you're touching things with the back of your hands. Most of the time pe people don't even notice it. Like you're trailing around a room. They don't even notice because you're barely touching, you know, you're barely hitting something, but th then you know where it is. Um, so when I'm drawing, it's the same sort of idea, 
But the hands are doing the work that um, a person's eyes are normally doing. Well, on that note, um, uh, Nellum asks, uh, John, how do you differentiate between colors? Do you have it braille marked? Um, excellent question. Yeah, and actually color is supremely e easy. I thought, I thought it would probably be one of the hardest things. So let me see. I'm, I'm trying not to hit the camera that I'm in. going to hit. Okay, hit it. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> I, I thought, you know, actually, I could put it up there. Um, is this is this where it needs yeah, to be? Yeah, yeah, okay, so, yeah. You can see it. So, so I, I brailled in this, and you can tell it's a very it's a very minimal sort of brailing, but the braille it just lets me be able to tell what, what's in the tube. So um, most of what I do is mixing colors. So by by brailing all all of the little bottles like like these little bottles over here like this. In here, it, it, the paint that's inside this little bottle is different than the paint that came in the bottle. Um, I put different mediums in, like I have a medium here. So I have a medium right here that I'll put in here, and I'll put the paint in it, I'll shake it up. And then I end, I end up with a paint that feels different. And that's important. <laughs> because the way that I uh, will um, mix mix my paints is that I'll... I'll I know what paints I'm using because I have the brown, so I know, oh, it's a lemon yellow, or it's a grass green, or whatever. Or uh, let's say if it's titanium white, I'll, I'll, I'll mix it so that it feels like toothpaste. If it's a black, I'll mix it so it feels like oil. Like I have a black in here, I'm going to shake it. That sounds liquidy. It is. And this this is actually, <laughs> the paint in here isn't what came in the bottle, it's what I mixed in here now. Oh, okay. So so it, ha it, has a, it has a medium in there, and I can't remember the precise name, so I won't confuse anybody with it. But it makes it feel like um, um, almost, it's like that gel stuff. So yeah. It's a little jelly-like, but it almost feels like satin. It feels very different. But because I make the colors feel different when, I, when I'm mixing them, like if I want a gray between black and white, I'll have the white that feels like toothpaste, the black that feels like oil. So I can mix for a texture to get a gray right between the two if I want. You know, and you just mix for the texture that's right between the two. And that may not sound like it gives you a lot of control, but your sense of touch is amazing. Like you have over 200 touch receptors on the pad of each finger and they're really, really good at being able to tell the roughness, the softness, the viscosity of something. Um, and if you think about it, so like you might have um, maybe a million or even a billion shades of blue out there in the, in the natural world on a painting like this painting right now, I have two blue and I'm going to probably at least add another, maybe two more. But uh, so, you know, Let's say I have three shades of blue on this painting. Out of a million or a billion colors, that's not a whole lot. You know, you've narrowed it down to just a few. So I'll make one really runny, one thick, one kind of in between. Then you've got a really, really easy way to be able to tell the color, and be able to work with the color, and be able to control it very precisely. Just yeah. using touch. And it sounds hard, but Jackie and I, we have blindfolded. It's going to sound bad. <laughs> we blindfolded children all across the nation. <laughs> and um, no, we, we've done workshops with li literally, I mean, literally tens of thousands of people. And I was, I was adding it up one day. And I was like, holy moly, we have been, we have blindfolded a few people. A few, yeah. A few. And, yeah. um, and, and all these people generally within about 10 minutes, and by generally, I really mean like 99% of the people, they're painting in about 10 minutes. And it's sort of a cartoon-like kind of figure, you know. It's like, you know, it may be like a cartoon flower, a cartoon bee or something. But they're able to feel the raised lines and know where they are. And they're able to use the paints that we mix for them where every color feels different. And it's funny because we almost always get the same reaction where at first people are like, I don't see how you do it. And then like five or ten minutes in, they're like, oh, it's like a, a light bulb yeah. just goes off. They're like, well, I, I get it. It's not, it's not that hard. Yeah. And it's funny. And we, we teach children who are visually impaired this. And... Their O and M skills, their ability to use a cane, um, white cane, goes through the roof. I mean, it's... yeah, I, I was going to say because um, she asked, I I want to understand how. Oh, I'm how... sorry, I'm just rambling. No, well, it was thank you. She said thank you for explaining, but um, uh, I wanted to understand how do you visualize your painting and how um, how you do contour so well um, as oh, a mom you. and someone who works with the deaf blind community. I truly am very intrigued and want to understand your strategy. So, which I when I read that, it made me think of when you know we'd go to lighthouse for the blind and do the workshops with them and everything and the kids would just like you were saying their o m skills explode yeah. once you you know show them how to navigate a canvas you know a, a raised line drawing on a canvas it it almost seems like you know yeah. light bulbs go off you know? yeah and 
and I know this is off topic of what of what we wanted to talk about, but it's such a good question. It's such an important question that I want to I want to you know I want to try to answer as much as I can because um, whenever I first started painting, I thought I was crazy. I didn't know of any other visually impaired person that had started, and there probably was one other person um, on the earth at least. But uh, I'm a gentleman in in, in in Turkey who has since passed away, but um, um, but I didn't know about him for years, and I thought I was out of my mind. <laughs> I thought I was crazy. I didn't tell people that I was starting to try to paint, but um, art had always been my way of dealing with things. And for me, I had started doing art from a really young age. Like from, I think I could draw before I could walk. And um, I was in and out of hospitals a lot as a child. I mean, a lot. I, had, I was born with severe epilepsy, had a kidney removed by the time I was seven, ended up getting Lyme disease. If I was having a bad day, art was my way of dealing with it. And a good day, it was my art. My, art was my way of celebrating it. So, Good day, bad day was always art, but um, you know, um, it wasn't until I lost lost my eyesight with it. But I had taken every course that I could on painting. I took every class I could. I read every book I could. I was, I mean, not on painting, but on drawing. And before that, so I knew how to draw. I knew how to do blueprints. I knew how to do do cartoons. I knew how to do portrait work before I lost my eyesight. So whenever I was in college, I ended up losing my eyesight. It was just a matter of taking what I already knew and just adjusting it, you know, just making a difference. So I was learning how to use my sense of touch to do everything else, you know, how to find the food on your plate, how to cook without burning yourself, how to sew buttons on without getting sticking yourself with a needle too many times, everything, you know, how to travel, how to get around your apartment, how to get around a city by, by using your sense of touch, you know, by using your senses in new ways. And since I was using my sense of touch to be able to basically you know, take the place of my eyes. Um, I was traveling one day going from my apartment and after about a year, I was still going to school. I would have a sighted guy take me to school. But after about a year, I could travel independently and find the school um, using my cane. And um, it occurred to me as I was walking down a curb one day, how straight that was. And it was almost like a line on a drawing and how this line, this curb would just meet up to another curb, which is like a one line meeting up to another line in a drawing. I thought, well, my goodness, if I can fill all these really big raised lines that are streets that are going down, surely I could use the same idea and be able to follow raised lines on a canvas in the same sort of way, maybe start drawing again. And I, like I say, I thought I was out of my mind, but I started drawing. And my drawings, this was like 18 years ago, and I paint and draw a lot every day. One, one of drawing. these days we should whip out some of your really old ones. Oh, my gosh, we, that's so <laughs> embarrassing. We should, though. We should. I, I, we, we were going, I'll have to swallow my pride a little bit. And Oh, I think, you know what? I think it's interesting, though. Cause, uh, cause, it, oh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, but you're right. Because when I first started, everything was extremely geometric, only two colors. If it was a crazy day, like, ooh, three colors, I'm out of my mind. But it was very, very simple, like sort of drawings. Like I went from being sighted and being able to do a portrait of a person, very realistic, or doing a blueprint of, a, of an engine, like an exploded view of an engine or a blueprint of a house, to suddenly trying to learn how to draw a square. And then trying to draw another square that's exactly half the size of that square, and just sweating bullets because it's just so complicated and so hard. And uh, But going from there to learning how to draw something um, more like a face or, or a tree or a street, the shadows of something. Shadows are crazy. And that, that, that took, shadows probably took two years. Um, I'm still working on them. Am I, who am I kidding? Um, you know, but all of it, that's the wonderful thing about art, though, is that it doesn't matter what you can't do in art. It's all about what you can do. That's all that it is. It's just you trying to figure out new ways to do things. And if you're a sighted artist um, or if you're an, a non-visual artist, it doesn't matter. You're, you're going to find your own way of doing things. I've never met two artists, no matter their ability or disability, that does things the same way. You know, everybody finds their own way of setting out their palette or mixing their paints. Or, um, you know, and surely they have their own ideas and they're expressing themselves in their own unique ways. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and that's one of the cool things. And, and, and I know we, we got to go on, but I want to say <laughs> something really quickly. Um, I, have paint, I, have, I, I have trained hundreds of visually impaired children and done workshops. We, we've worked with blind services with seven different states. We go in, we've worked with them um, with blind services in, in Brazil, America. We've Skyped into other places. Um, I've, I've, I've seen children though that, who have painted and have never seen anything. They didn't have any of the advantages that I've had. And a lot of artists who are visually impaired that are getting in it now are doing abstract art. 
And yeah. critics are looking at it and saying, like, oh, my goodness, this is incredible artwork. Their use of color is just so, you know, fundamentally different. But they're using color as a symbol, you know, almost the way a writer will use a word as an adjective or adverb to express emotion or this. Um, the, these, these artists are also using color as symbols to be able to describe their ideas, you know, and using the paints almost like a sentence. And it's fascinating. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop talking well, about she that. Says, I, I could talk about that forever. You can. You can talk forever. <laughs> um, I'm <just> excited. <laughs> well, she says, no, you're not crazy. You're an inspiration. Can't even tell you the impact you had on my daughter. It's important for our kids to know that even though they are blind, creativity does not stop with their vision. It's in their heart. Well, that's beautiful. Yes. That's nice. I like that. That's beautiful. So. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so we were going to talk about some of our favorite galleries, galleries and museums or something that we've been into. Yes. Yes. And, and I, I actually think this, what's, well, I don't know, this to preface this a little bit because of what's going on. I've been reading a lot of news articles, um, about, you know, how everybody's the shelter in place and all of a sudden it's, you know, the whole, this whole thing happening to society in, has the possibility and probably will impact our culture in the sense of how we interact with people mm -hmm. and how we experience things and how we um, gather or anything like that. So um, I've been reading a lot of articles on, you know, what, how, what is that? How is this going to affect the art world? Because it's our business. And, um, it, you know, it, it's a little scary. It's a little scary, you know, but I also think it's an it's a super interesting time because, you know, I just read this this article in Vulture um, that it literally it literally was titled titled the last day of the art world um, or is it the first day of like the new world or you know mm -hmm. and it was interesting because it was all about how you know galleries and museums and how they function and and um, even one of our Facebook friends just posted that. The MoMA in New York has uh, stopped all their um, their freelance. They've terminated all, the, all their freelance educator contracts, which oh, is man. really really scary. Wow! <laughs> um, and museums across the board are losing like thirty three million a, a day. <clears throat> a day. Yeah, like all the museums. Oh, oh I'm together. Say, wow, which museum is this? <laughs> right? <laughs> They're super popular. <laughs> <laughs> but all museums together are you are losing thirty three million a day. So so it's pretty significant the impact this will have in for us and art festivals and gallery shows and it's already probably going to impact i mean unless there's a vaccine or something it will impact how we interact and so as we talk about these interesting galleries or places that we've been to experience art i'm i like i don't know maybe it's the the design researcher in me but i like to come at it at, at like a, a what's a new way that we can reinvent this so that it's like you know, a, a new way to experience art or how, mm -hmm. what, what, how is this going to change the way we experience art? So, um, anyway, have you, come up with it? Have you solved it? No, I would <laughs> love to. In fact, when, when I was trying to decide on like a thesis for my, my grad degree, one of them was, um, the museum experience and how, you know, you take it to the next level and technology and all that stuff. So, um, with all this happening while it's really scary and we don't, you don't know how it's going to end up. Uh, it's also like a really interesting time to like, who is going to come up with the next great idea for this, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so keep that in mind while you're looking at, you're, you're thinking about these galleries is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that is interesting. <laughs> the way around. A lot of times in galleries, that's, that is interesting. I mean, cause a lot of places are starting to do virtual tours and they're getting things set up for that, yeah. you know, and, and they've never had to get the software or hardware to be able to, to work with video and whatnot. And, um, well, um, and now, now that they have it and they're getting mm -hmm. used to it and they're, and they're, the people are being trained to do it. I mean, are they just going to put it up after this or are they, are they, or, or is, are well, virtual tours going to be more? I mean, I, I, I don't, you know, I think maybe it was, it's something that, that was, it just needed to be forced. Like it was the next stage in experiencing art and I mean, yeah. it's, it was in a, a component that all galleries or museums needed, but they just didn't want to take the step to do it. And now this forced them to do it. And then when we can all come back again, it'll just be an added element right now. I think that's how that's going to look. Yeah. But like even Hot, Hot Springs, Arkansas, um, we have some friends out there, uh, Mary and Robert, and Mary like heads up the arts, you know, involvement there. 
And they've got, uh, I think it's, the website is hotspringsarts.org. And because they have like a really popular gallery walk that was, you know, I'm sure that mm, those yeah. galleries are suffering. So they went completely online. And now you can do the gallery walk online, which is like awesome, you know. So if people don't adapt or if the gallery owners or museum owners don't adapt mm -hmm. in that sense, it's 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 their end. It's yeah. just it doesn't make sense. Yeah, so. that's that's one of the things I, I think I think one of the things like we're we're lucky in a way, like we we have these different cameras that are set up and things and we have the sound and all because we've we've Skyped and we've worked with classes in the past and, and part of it is because the artwork we do is international. Like like a lot of it like the um because we work with so many charities and nonprofits, we'll get emails and stuff from people all around the world. And maybe a teacher will hear about us, you know, in a country in Africa and they'll say, Oh, can you talk to our students? We're like, yeah, you know, and having the cameras makes it easier if you're doing a, a presentation or a workshop, you can move it over. But then something like this, you know, like for our live shows and stuff and our yeah. videos, you know, it's kind of like, Oh, Hey, let's have fun with it too. And do, do different things. Yeah. And, I mean, I think, um, I mean, this, this, this is kind of, I don't know. It, to me and obvious, but I think, you know, Jack and I have a, a VR set for the Sony PS4 that we have, and we play all these ridiculous VR games. Like the other night I was flying the Enterprise and stuff. It's really cool. Anyway, so <laughs> I don't see why they don't, there's not this VR component to every gallery. You know, I mean, like, I know, I know it's, it would probably be expensive in the software and, and coding and all that stuff, but I think at some point it's going to become a necessity where you, you, you know, you can buy the experience in, in your home and go th walk through it or at least like, you know, through VR, you can do it, which yeah. if you haven't experienced like VR gaming, it's phenomenal. So, yeah. um, you know, I foresee maybe maybe even that being an element that that's added to some museum experiences. Yeah, that could be cool. Hey, um, I know I know. Um... You, we put some images up here. You put some images. Okay, there. so so yeah, so we were going to talk about um, some of the f the favorite places that we've seen art or or that I don't know are cool art wise. This is you at the Casa de um, Thomas Jefferson in Brasilia oh. when you did a show there. But I figured you because you really liked this space, like it's a beautiful space. But you could speak to this one. This was really good. Oh yeah, this 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 was a great place. Is in the 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 gallery. But Jim, can you see the gallery in this photo? It's it's on the side. It's like behind the glass wall, which is behind you in the picture. Oh, what am I doing? You're painting. And oh, the, there's oh, a crowd oh, so around I'm outside. You. Oh, yes, yeah, you're outside like, in the courtyard. Oh, yeah. So like, if you walk out the front doors of this gallery to right to the left is where I, I would be. And then really neat thing. This this, this whole show was really great. The United States government kind of made this happen. You know, they um they they made this cool cultural and ambassadors really so we could come and, and do this and we work we work with some different um groups and schools and different things this gallery here it was so so cool it's so wonderful because it, it really the whole front of it is is basically like a glass wall that can open up so and when the weather is beautiful then the then the gallery just gets way bigger and it's sort of an open air kind of gallery for part of it and then the other part is in the building and it, it was so nice it just makes a, a a free flowing sort of thing. And, and the, the part where I'm standing is a courtyard where you're surrounded by the school. So it's just open courtyard with this, this gallery, which is a building that's in the middle and the courtyard completely surrounds up the gallery. So it's just, yeah. Like and, this the, open, and the ceiling flowing. in the gallery is glass. The, is it? the, I believe it was cause it was lit by the sun and then they had some weird oh, lighting cool. at, in the evening. But, that's um, cool. But yeah, it was it was beautiful and it was airy and it it I mean of course it's luscious green plants because it's Brazil and you know so it was it was really cool and this experience this whole like gallery experience was pretty cool because it was all um, non visual artists that you were coming in and, and doing a, a joint show with yeah and yeah. they had I mean they went the full mile on this they 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 had um, runners on the on the floor that if you walked with a cane you could you knew how to navigate it and every piece you could feel it or hear it or it, i mean yeah the artwork was amazing it, it was really cool there's so some talented people there and it was so, so wonderful and the gallery was such a great space because it just seemed to incorporate the outside and the inside um which really made it nice like on a rainy cloudy day it would have been like a normal building but then on beautiful days which they mostly have you know, it was much bigger, much nicer. It was, I love the way they incorporated the outside and the inside. Yeah. 
Okay, so this I threw up there. This <clears throat> is Or Street Studios. Oh, uh, Or Street. Or Street, and this is in uh, Columbia, Missouri. And I fell in love with this place. <laughs> like the minute John and I left, I literally looked up how to create a space like this. Like how, you know, I mean, like financially, how would this come together? Basically what this place is, is um, it was an old fact, it was an old factory in like the downtown area. And um, a guy came in in 2006 and was like, hey, I'm, you know, we should revitalize this, turn it into art, artist studios. And I mean, it's, it's gorgeous now. It's like a really industrial, cool looking place. And it's got outdoor seating and all sorts of stuff. But um, you go into this, this, um, this multiple buildings, but you go in and each artist has their own room or studio. And in the front of it is a door and it's every door is done by that artist. So, uh, you know, you, you kind of get a feel for the style of the artist on their door and obviously all over the walls, but uh, it just seemed, I don't know. It just seemed like such a cool spot. <laughs> it was nice too. Cause um, you know, if you wanted to show, you just open your doors and then suddenly your workspace is all, it become becomes a gallery space, yeah. you know. And then if you don't want to show, you just keep your doors closed, and then it's just a solid wall, like all all the all the all the doors open up into spaces. And yeah, and I and I really like I love this. I don't know how well it is because I'm not in the business of it, but I love this as a business model. You've got a makeshift constant gallery, and you're renting space to artists for their studio. And I know this place does. Um, there's a rotation where each artist gets some time and they get to show in the bigger space of, of th this particular place. And and there's a whole other room that's for lessons and workshops and meetings. And I mean, you could, if you were an artist renting space there, you could supplement by like teaching classes in the workspace, you know, I mean, all sorts of different things that, I mean, I just love, I, I was like, how, how can we recreate this in Denton, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's such a great idea. And, one, and, and I know, like, there was a place here in Denton that um, just tried to do that a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. I mean, like, the way the way that they did is, is that they, they, had, they had a big open space that they could start building from. Um, I think I think one of the places in Denton, or, there, or a lot of places that try to do this, they, they try to incorporate it in an office building or something. Yeah, it was. You know, and you've uh, already got all these rooms, so you have to be able to walk all the way through the building to be able to find somebody. It's, it's yeah. Where this was, it was sort of an open space for a gallery, and then, and then a big kind of hallway with, but every, but the whole thing could turn into a gallery. And it's yeah, just, it's it, it it was transformable. Right, it was made specific. I mean, because they went in and renovated it. You go to the website and you'd see all the renovation pictures, but they went in specifically making it for this experience. So yeah, um, yeah, it was pretty impressive and. I'd love to have something like that here. Yeah, that would but be cool. really, really yeah. quick for you on because I'm, I don't want to get lost in the comments. Um, Shima joined us and oh, she hey, said uh, um, when we were talking a little bit ago about like how this is going to, you know, change our, us culturally as like you know nobody wants to get near each other. She said um, in a sense it socializes it right and it makes those boundaries more permeable. Um, so she's, you know, wondering about the same stuff. I'm really curious how this is going to look in the future. You know. Yeah. Um, and Azur says, I hope for people to learn to love one another no matter who you are. Um, oh, and then he, uh, how big was the workspace? So, I, you know, I'm trying to think in that Or Street. It was, you know, it wasn't, I want to say that it was like a maybe 12 feet by 10 feet or something. Yeah, it was like an average room. But, 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 but the room, though, was, was only part of it. And that's really kind of a part where you... you it, it depended on the artist. There's some people that worked in their room and that was it. And it might've been a little bigger. It's hard to tell because the rooms were so full of easels or tables or stuff yeah. that, it, that I, it was hard for me to get a feeling for it. a feel for it. I mean, but, um, but, um, but, but, but every other place in there was a communal workspace. So they, they, you know, the, there might be like some lockers somewhere. There may be um, like sinks or, or different things that people can expand in. I, I believe like a lot of these places are like that where, yeah. where you have that space and that space is yours. Nobody can get into that space. But then when you're working, you, you can use like the bigger spaces and stuff. So you, you can move out of there. You can use that as a storeroom as you want. Or most, most people seem to use that as their, um, their studio. Yeah. As their, their complete studio. Cause you know, it's, it, it might have been bigger than 10 by 12. It, it might have seemed like that because there was so much stuff. In well, and I think that there were different sized rooms. So if you were like a oh, potter yeah. or you had a kiln or anything like that, I mean, your rooms, I mean, I, I'm sure the rent changed accordingly, but yeah, you, 
the, I, I believe they were different sizes, but the majority of the ones we saw, was, I remember them being like 10 by 12 or 12 by 12 or something. You know, one of the, the, the art space, this is something that we're actually going to open one day. We're going to pull the trigger on. And uh, <laughs> we've waited because we just want to find the right space. But it'd be really great to find a space just like this. Like one of the one of the problems I think a lot of galleries have that go under is that they expect to make all their money on art. And if you have a month or two or three where you're not selling pieces, then the gallery's not making money. So our idea about a gallery is is that you don't need to sell art to be able to pay for the gallery. And so we're looking for other ways. And so having a, like a maker space where, where other artists can be there and defray some of the costs from it mm -hmm. would, would be great. But the other thing too is um, it, it's something that I've, like I, I've seen or heard around the world is, is like art bar sort of things where um, where you know there's there's like a place where you can get a drink in there and you can go check out the art and you can do this or that. A lot of shows are becoming kind of like that, turning into little art bar kind of shows. Because, yeah. But the but the thing though that'd be nice if you could go and get you know like instead of going maybe to a, a winery or to like a fancy beer place or something. You can go there. You you can buy a beer. You can look at the artwork, and you buying that it pays for the for the place, which means that the gallery doesn't have to worry about just bringing in artists that, that they think they can make money on. You know, yeah. you can you can have a lot more risk. You can say, well, we're we're going to show you because your art is awesome and people need to see it. And if you sell art, that's great, and you can keep you know the money for it, or you know you 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 get the money for it because the gallery is making money in other ways and. You know, I think that would be phenomenal, yeah. especially for upcoming artists. Yeah, anyway, yeah, definitely. That's that's something I want to do is that just start a different model where, um, you know, where the are the art space is being supported not not from the artists, but the art space is there for the artists. You know, which yeah, would be nice. yeah. Rock and roll. Rock okay. And roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, this next one is um, actually this is the Cleveland Museum of Art, which I will say I've never been to it. I would love to go to it. Um, and the reason why I stumbled on this one and would love to go is when I was trying to choose a thesis in, in <clears throat> design research and I was trying to think of different ways for a, you know, a person to have a, an experience in a museum or gallery, this was top of the list. This was the newest trend. This, is, this place is phenomenal. Well, I've heard you talk about this place before. I yeah. know. I, I, I would love to go to it. So they have a, a thing, like it's a traditional museum. It's got lots of old and new and just big stuff. It's great. Um, it's in Ohio, obviously. Uh, but they've got this thing that when you walk in, it's called the, the Art Lens Studio. And so when you go in, it, it basically uses uh, cutting edge technology to give the visitor a chance to use movement and play to experience what is in the museum. So for example, what you're seeing on the screen right now is, is they're, they're in there and they're, these people are trying to get in the position of one of the famous sculptures that they have deep into the museum, right? So, you know, as they are in front of the screen and they're, you know, getting into the position, having fun, you know, enjoying art through movement and play. <laughs> and, then it, and then it takes a snapshot and, and all of this goes to your, your smartphone. So you also walk away with lots of photos from the experience. Um, of the piece of art and them trying to get into the position and all that sort of stuff. So, um, and when you walk in, they have these computers where you put your phone on it and, and um, it syncs up with like, obviously the photos and all sorts of different things. But once a visitor does this, then they go to the museum and they actually go seek out these different sorts of pieces of art that they've had this experience with. So it's so much more memorable mm. when you leave, you know, I mean, you can, when somebody, when you walk out of the museum and somebody's like, you know, what, what piece did you like? You can actually refer to a piece because you remember it's not just this, you know, fire hose hitting you because <laughs> what museums tend to be. So I just love this concept. So in, th in this kind of gets me, this is my soapbox about like, you know, what is going to be the, the next experience in galleries and museums? You know, what, how is this going to change things? How is technology going to be incorporated? You know, are people going to feel comfortable gathering again? And if so, or if not, what does that look like? So, yeah. and, you know, I mean, I think that's a really interesting way to, I don't know, look at it and then, I don't know, start brainstorming new ideas. <laughs> that's a really cool idea. I but love, I, love that. I would love to go to the, this place and experience this. And, you know, I think every, I think if not that exact, you know, 
model, I think a lot of museums should have an experience kind of like that so that the viewer has an attachment to the art even if they don't like it, they'll, they had an experience. Yeah, and that's one of the hardest things is that um, I know leading so many tours through museums for children and stuff and, <laughs> and, um, and going through so many galleries and museums ourselves, it's, sometimes somebody will ask you, well, what did you see when you were in the gallery? Or what, what, what art do you remember? And sometimes because there was hundreds of paintings and things and you're trying to remember and they, get, they all get lost. But being able to... You know, interact you know and be able to, to to remember it i mean that's that just it makes a connection you'll remember forever yeah i mean you know now with like all these interactive immersive experiences it's almost like you know i wonder what it would look like if you started to m meld the two you know you've got yeah you you start to make these museums immersive and you walk away with photos and selfies and all this sort of stuff these hashtags whatever yeah <laughs> you yeah. know i mean like like how how do you marry the two, and then how does that look a year from now when you know we're maybe comfortable again with people or not? I don't know. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. This is true. Yeah, and and um, I know I know we're about coming up on an hour right now, and but um, but I wanted to mention like what what's going to be coming up because uh, this Thursday we're going to be doing um, Easter sort of crafts art. Art, artsy kind of things like some some things that you know you can have fun for Easter, um, make, making things and just uh, generally having some artis, artsy fun. Yeah. And then, um, but but next Monday, and I'm really excited about this because um, um, we talked on like the last live show about maybe showing some, some of our art from our, the collection that our artists. Oh really yeah, like. yeah, yeah. And one of the things that we really want to do, and this is something we're trying to do on the Jurassic Art Measures or that we're doing over the, um, on the group Facebook group, is it. I want to encourage any artist, anybody out there that loves art, that's creating art, um, to go over there and join, join the group or send us a message on Facebook somewhere, you know, or if you don't remember which group, just, you know, send us a message and say, hey, yeah, um, what is it you're doing that? Because one of the things that we want to do is to be able to help support other artists. And so we want to talk about how to, about to make prints, like answer, answer any of your questions. Like if you want to get into gallery shows, if you want to work with museums, if you're wanting to make your own prints, if you're wanting to, you know, how do, how do I do a G clay? Um, we're also going to, for artists that are in our area, um, for, you know, we're going to do some things where we can actually help you for, to photograph your art and be able to present it and get like shots, like booth shots or, or whatever shots like to get shows. And all that's for free. I mean, we're just, you know, we, we have the equipment and, um, so whenever like we're allowed to get out of our homes again, <laughs> we can we can meet we can do that. And if you're not in our area, then um, there's other ways that we want to help. But yeah, um, it's really hard right now for art. It's hard for a lot of people. But um, you know, when people are concerned about toilet paper and getting sacks of flour, you know, a lot of people aren't, aren't necessarily collecting art right now. So you know, a lot of the shows have been canceled. A lot of galleries have had to cancel things. And, yeah, and things are just kind of up in flux. You know, so. But there's some things that we can actually work on to make um, our art better and be able to get it out in front of people. So when all this blows over, we'll have a, like a stronger footing. Yeah. You know? and, and we're actually putting together some um, um, pop-up shows and different ideas that we want to go to places. And this is something that we're putting together. We haven't rolled it out in front of anybody or for anybody yet, but it's something that, that we're um, actively working on. And one of the ideas is actually to work with other artists, so to be able to go into an area and be able to incorporate other artists into the show, which is not anything I've ever done. I've done some group shows with people, but um, but I've never done a show where it's like my show, but then we're going to make it into a different vision. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, well, really fast. Um, uh, so um, Gina has joined us. She's the one that shared the painting last time so thanks oh, for joining us thank you um, so much for sharing that that's so cool i know it was awesome we love seeing other people's art that you guys are creating now and explaining it i explain them to john and then we share them it's fun um but uh she asked what's the email where i can reach you guys about a commission unfortunately i won't be able to walk for commencement from college this may and would like a painting of a girl wearing a face mask and a graduation cap but need to discuss logistics that oh, is nice. That's a, a brilliant cool. idea i love I, that that's yeah, so I funny i've been that. wanting to do a, um, a giant painting um, i mean this doesn't have to be giant but i've been wanting to do like a painting of, of a face mask and everything but i never thought about like the, a graduation sort of thing. Yeah, well, the the email is bramblet at gmail.com, so um, your yeah. last name. and 
Yeah, yeah. Um, everything for me is just my last name. So on on Facebook, it's Bramblet, and on um, Instagram is Bramblet, Twitter is Bramblet, my my email is Bramblet at Gmail. Um, and if you ever forget, you can just type in Blind Painter, and I'll pop up, and, yep. and my email will be there. Um, and as Ur said, um, I think we're lucky to have the internet during this time. Uh, think much how how much scarier it would have been during the Spanish flu and um, no way to get info, which... Oh my goodness, isn't terrible. that the truth? I've, I've, <laughs> never thought I've, about I've, that I've, gone, yes. I've gone down the, the, the rabbit hole of, of listening to doc, documentaries about the Black Death and Spanish, Spanish flu and all these different things, and um, which is very macabre, but um, but it's but it, it's also kind of nice, like whenever you hear about something that's worse than what you're dealing with, <laughs> and you, you think yeah. like, well... Things are bad, but it, you know. But thank goodness we aren't these people. <laughs> They're having to deal with that. Yeah. Bless her yeah, hearts. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that would be crazy. Uh -huh. But um, really quick before we sign off, because mm -hmm. I feel like it, we gleamed over a little bit on the whole like boost your art during the shelter in place. Yes. Um, I know. I went off on a tangent. Well, I you know, and and I don't know for anybody that really cares, but um, if you're trying to like get your art out there the number one suggestion I would say is to like get it up on a website um, and there's lots of free ones or you can you know pay to have somebody do it but that seems a little crazy because there are free ones but <clears throat> Etsy's one we don't use Etsy but Etsy is really popular with artists and then just social media the heck out of it I mean I, 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 you know, it's not mm -hmm. overrated people may think oh social media is overrated for like your art and stuff but oh my gosh no like you know, obviously you want to engage your audience and, and it, it's all personal and everything, but you have a website where you, people can actually purchase things mm -hmm. and um, and then just promote on social media, you know. That's great. You doing it, like like the artists actually doing it is really popular, um, you know, and I know for us, we, we it was a giant learning curve with having a website that, that people could purchase things through and, and that website um, like depending on what you did, they built the product and sent it, as opposed to other websites where they just place the order and then you handle the product. Yeah, yeah. So, so it makes a difference. Yeah, it, it makes a huge difference in your profits and all that. So, um, I would suggest like step one is just get a website started and um, start posting. You know what you do on social media, and we can even like spend a, a, a day talking about how to photograph your art and stuff. So yeah, yeah, I know that's a big. Sure big problem for some some artists although nowadays with a smartphone you can get a pretty decent photo of anything well, so <laughs> yeah it depends but then but then it but it needs to be a certain clarity though and and the lighting is a big thing yeah or just huge and um and if if you have um if your art is more 3d ish um glare and stuff apparently is a big problem so so there's certain there's certain things that can make it a lot easier and jackie has like two degrees in art and photography so you know you're you're the perfect person to, to, to talk about that. Yeah, and yeah, we we're lucky because you having that has saved us so much money and is in trouble. Yeah, we, you know, and it still was a learning show. curve, you know, because taking pictures of two two D paintings is different than what like doing art photography where you're doing like a scene or something. Yeah. You know? So it was a learning curve for you, I think, when you had. Oh videos. yeah, yeah. Even though Definitely. even though you had shot weddings, you'd done all this. You 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 um you, you have a degree in in journalistic photography. A degree in art photography, and then a design degree, and a master's in that. Yeah, I'm still I mean, learning. And, yeah, well, and you and you're still constantly learning, you know, new tricks of the trade. So, yeah, we should definitely devote a, a you know, a little bit of a show to like how to photograph your art. That would be good. So we'll oh. we'll do that for you guys. And then, yeah, so next show. Well, I, I want to say really quick before we get that, but prints because some some artists um, really back off about doing prints. Yeah. Right now, like I mean, they can be your absolute best friend, especially um, in times like this when when people aren't necessarily want to make a big ticket. You know, um, um, you can sell prints and and you know and and really grow your fan base. And there's a lot of times we've had people who have bought prints from us like ten years ago, and then and then they you know they're advanced in their careers and they come back and they you know they want an original. You yeah. Know? And so, but print sales can really really yeah. help though. Yeah, so um, Mike joined us. He said, why is your show only an hour? Oh, my bladder probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, 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 <laughs> well, and, and we, we will eventually 
run out of things to say and we'll just stare at each other and it'll get awkward. But <laughs> um, And then yeah. Gina said, uh, it's awesome that you were stoked to do something in a mask. So, And Azur said, yes, tips on oh. photos would be great. So you know what, because next thir this Thursday when we go over like all the Easter stuff, I know that's not going to take a lot of time. We could We could talk about like how to photograph your art. That would be Cool. Yeah, and so I, we'll I want to say too day. for any artists out there, please send us your stuff if you want us to be able to incorporate it on the show a week from now. Yeah, if you and if you have any questions, like specific questions, um, you know, just throw them up on on social or the, this feed or whatever. Especially about the photography stuff, and I'll we'll address them next show. So yeah, and and you you mentioned too about the prints about how like there's some websites, and if you just get your art on a website, it'll make a big difference. First one we, we did, like, if we had a print and say the print sold for $250, our cut of that might be, like, $5 or 10 Yeah, depending on... And we thought, on, what the heck? And then, yeah, so... You so we learned how to do our own stuff, how to make our own prints, and, you know, so so you end up getting the bulk of it and not the person that's selling it, you know? Right. So, so there's little tips and tricks to be able to make prints more worth it, you know, and for you. And yeah. It's not, it's not difficult. You just have to know... A few things and then and then it, it makes it where you can do it yeah so yeah that'll be good we'll, we'll talk more about that next we'll do photo tips and um, I'll go in depth about that next um, That's show. a great idea yeah and um, and then I'll go more in in fact I can like give links to like what we use and all sorts of stuff for like creating the, the prints and all this sort of stuff so um, yeah we'll spend a lot more time on Thursday going over the specifics if you guys really want to get that started and um, and then we'll spend a little bit of time on like Easter projects because Jack and I are going nuts. So we'll have some <laughs> projects under our belt to share with you guys. So. Easter fun. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Well, thanks guys so much for joining us for this. I, I sure do. I, I appreciate it so much. And, you know, I think, I think we've had like the averages of around three, 400 people that watch yeah, by, by, the, by, yeah. by the end of the night, you know, when I check it. And all which I know, like if you're like the Tonight Show or something, you're like three, four hundred people. Like you'd be, you'd be freaking out. For us, I'm it, excited. Yeah, for us, we're, <laughs> we're we're completely stoked that there's that many people out there that are willing to spend some time with us. And so you got, you, got, you don't have anything to do. You're like I'm worth it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> thanks, thanks so much, guys, and hope, hopefully we'll see you Thursday. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> You're nuts. <laughs> Whatever.